Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none. You know my dad walk on. Hey, man. Hey, we out here in L.A. again, guys. We got a guy here. Don't need no introduction. He is a frequenter of the show. This guy right here is special, man. Um, you know, been friends with this guy for a long time. Uh, how long has it been, bro? Uh, you, how long you been with uh, Coop? Ten years? Eleven. Eleven? I've been 11 years. <laughs> been 11 years. 11 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a good run. 11 years is a long time. 2012, bro. Ken Yada Sands in the building, guys. Y'all already know, man. Hey, man, like and subscribe to the channel, man. Make sure you hit us up on Patreon. Uh, make sure you also uh, rock with us on our membership uh, and all that good stuff, man. Um, hey, man, a, a new day. Everybody knows that every year is something different going on. So 2023, what you think, man? Man, I... Don't do it, man. Don't do me like this, man. I got lied to a lot last year. 2020, what you think? Yeah, a lot of people lied to me last year. Just a year there. older. Yeah, well. Ah. Is it <laughs> going down or what? Man? I don't know, man. I mean, a lot of people, you know, uh, Google laid out 14,000 people. Uh, who else was it uh, laid some people off? IBM. IBM laid off a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's a crazy time. But Ken Yada Sands in the building, y'all. Y'all already know him from apparel. He loved to deal with these clothes. Shout out to uh, Positive Wear. Shout out to, uh, what's that other brand you was telling me about earlier? I didn't just, it slipped my mind. PRPS. PRPS. We also do and what does that stand for, PRPS? Purpose. Purpose. Yeah, they've it. been doing it for like 20 some odd years now. Wow. So you just love clothing brands that have like positive meanings. Because you have positive word and you have purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Then, then a cool a king of oneself. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard right there. I mean, you know, you, you got to live what you what you believe in, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of brands out there that have approached me that, you know, that I just don't believe in and I can't get into. Oh, so you have turned down brands. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I get a lot of I get a lot of offers from different brands. Even I, if it's a popping brand, but you just don't agree with Yeah, I mean, I I don't think that you have to have like clothing with you know, with sayings on it that just are not conducive to a good derogatory, to a good environment. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of, because I tell people all the time, I told you in one of my interviews, I was like, look, I live in this community, so the last thing I want to do is encourage you to do something left. Right. You know, I right. mean, you don't think these kids is watching? You don't think they're paying attention to everything we're doing? I like that because a lot of people are just about the money. And again, it just depends on, to me, it depends on how old you are. It depends on how you were raised. And when I say how old you are, because to me, if you're new in the game and up and coming, you trying to get your foot in, you're going to take whatever you can get just to get out there. You understand what I mean? They're not looking at the morals to it. They're not looking at what it represents. They're just trying to push it. If they can sell it, they're going to sell it. They don't care who it is. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot, I think you just have to stick to your word and stick to your code, mm -hmm. you know, what code works for you. You know, mm -hmm. if you, if you that kind of person that has to go out there and do all the griminess, then, you know, that's your code. But for mm -hmm. me, I can't, I can't roll with that code. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't do that. That's not what I'm about. What I'm about so. so do you believe that every time when you see somebody walking down the street and they have on a certain shirt that says something, you think that that's what that person represents or you just think that it, they just picked it up and wear it. A lot of times right now, you're starting to find that brands are representing people's attitudes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this whole thing with, uh, uh, was it anti-social? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a thing. That was really big. And it's still pretty big. But, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it was really interesting to see somebody who was actually anti-social and then wearing this shirt and representing the company. I was like, that's funny. Like, you really, that's really you. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, so you see a lot of people they'll they'll wear a lot of uh, God inspired T-shirts, but you know right. in a new creative way. I've I love seen a that. Lot of that. I've seen a lot of that been going yeah. around. Recently. And then and just just the positive wear and us having these conversations has made brands mm -hmm. put more positivity in their in their right. in their stuff. So I've seen a lot of brands that don't even do positive wear, but they'll put positive. Like you know, Pink Dolphin was one of them. Um, they even had a sh had to have positive. Because everything in time goes around and come back around again, and there was so much negativity in the world that positive had to come back around sooner or later. And um, but a question that just came to my mind about positive where you do a lot of positive quotes, but you don't put God quotes on your on your apparel, do you? No, I, I don't think I put God quotes on. I mean, and why do is, you choose not to? Well, to be honest with you, um, I, I believe in the universe. 
law of mm -hmm. life you know mm -hmm. what i mean you know um so for me it's it's a matter of like you know the things that i believe in are universal which means that they're laws you mm -hmm. know like karma is a real thing right you know i think everybody on this planet can attest to you know what comes around goes around mm -hmm. you know and then you know i don't like to just be preachy and stuff like that because then it gets to this whole religion and everybody wants to start separating each other on religion mm -hmm. i'm like look there's a universal law you just gotta understand, believe in what's righteous, right? And 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 your outcome will be there. You know, exactly. when you out there tricking for your money, you see what happens. You know, it's short lived. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these guys are out here, you know, promoting all this stuff. Some of these guys are in jail, dead, mm -hmm. gone, no longer in existence. You know, and I'm like, I'm not about that. I'm about like, look, man, I'm I'm trying to live a good life. I've learned from a real OG. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, learn how to sleep well. My next question to you is. Um, we're in L.A., right? And when you think about L.A., because we, we stopped at a gas station, not a gas station, but a um, corner store this morning, and a guy said to us, this is L.A., you got to be careful. You know what I mean? And when I say that... So it's you too? Not in a bad way. It's not a bad way. It's just he knew that He's we were out of town. He's an older guy, and he'd be watching the news every day. Yeah, he know that we out of towners and stuff like that. But even with P&B Rock being... Um, Killed. He lived here, I think, didn't he? PMB Rock. I thought he moved up here. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I couldn't tell. You. But but with all that been happening, and with California, especially with gang violence or just people just you know robbing or stealing, because we've heard about all of that and don't care. They're not just robbing you and just leaving you. They they can kill you. Yeah. How do you do? You feel that way living here? Do you do you? Are you just like you know whatever? This is normal. Like I just move how I move, and that's it. Pretty much. I mean, you know, I'm I'm 52 years old. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I've been out here for a very long time, and uh, to be honest with you, it's nowhere near as dangerous as it was before in okay. LA. So at this point, it's you know you can, you know you can listen to all the things that you hear because obviously, I mean, if you have I have rings, so I'm forever getting alerts to all the silly things that go mm -hmm. on in the neighborhood and whatnot. But to be honest with you, it's like it was way worse than this. Um, I just think that if you, you know, if you just try to, you got to be smart, mm -hmm. you know, like the other night I was uh, at a basketball game, my son's basketball game, and I haven't seen like something like this in a long time. So we're leaving and we hear this huge crowd going off. Oh! So it was a fight that broke out like after the game and stuff. So I'm like, you know, I'm trying to tell my kids because I have all these kids in my car. Mm -hmm. So I was like, look, let's just, you know, high step into the car. So we were like a good, I would say a good block and a half up the street trying to get to the car and then a couple of the guys are like you know not too far behind but then my son and, and one of his partners is taking a hot minute and next thing you know the whole fight came into the parking lot mm. and i'm trying to yell at my son get in the car so we can roll like do you not see what's going on on tv like y'all think this is funny like you see these women getting to i mean it was a full-out brawl like i'm literally watching this thing unfold and fighting right in the parking lot this is a big but thing. But the kids, the first thing when they see that, the first thing they do is pick up their phone and start videoing. Dude, it was a whole crowd of phones. You can see all the lights right. following these girls getting into a scrap and all this crazy, all this madness is going on. I'm like, kid, get in the car. Because mm -mm. we're not trying to be around this. You don't know how this is going to end. Stray bullets have no name. Bruh. So I was like, yo, they was really getting it in. I was like, let's go home, dude. You know, it's like, you know, it was, but my kids, I guess they, one of my sons didn't really understand that. I mean, he apologized later, but I was like, look, man, I know y'all think this is girls fighting, but you just have no idea what's in somebody's car, what's in somebody's, you know, situation. And, and, and to your point, it's dangerous. So you just got to skirt, you know, mm -hmm. get out to leave the scene and, you know, and that's it. But, yeah, it's, it's funny out here. Man, so um, I see you wearing that Morehouse College shirt. Oh, yeah. This is, you know, this is uh, one of the OG brands, too, right here. AACA. Oh, yeah? Yeah. American. That's a nice looking shirt. Just give me the rundown on Morehouse. I know you went over there, man. What do you What do you think about where it was then versus where it is today? Uh, when you look at how it's moved and how, when it's mentioned, you know, when I went there, um, it was a magical time. You know, because a lot of us was like, you know, after school days and whatnot, we were really excited to go and get this experience. And uh, I would not trade that experience for nothing. I mean, it was amazing. I mean, you know. You go out there, you want to party, you're meeting Spelman Nights, you're meeting Clark, you're meeting all the AAU um, people, and just like, you know, we're just having fun. Music's good at that time. Um, everybody was traveling to all the other black colleges, and everything was kind of fresh. You know, there was nothing, 
that we assumed everything was kind of like new. You know, Freak Nick was still popping. You know, all these things were still popping. It was new. Like, as opposed to now, like, you've kind of, like, trying to, you've seen everything already. And it's just, it's just a repeat of the same thing. Mm. Um, you go there now, um, you know, the good thing is, is that, you know, we've gotten a lot of press. I mean, Morehouse has actually become a household name now. You know, versus like or Moorhead or something like that. It's like no, everybody knows Morehouse now, especially when you have like Robert Smith coming in there and, and blessing all our these kids with you know paying off their that was big. student loans. But that's the only reason why you know Robert Smith, man. That's the only reason why you know Robert you know, Smith. A lot of people don't even. I know. knew Robert Smith before. They like I that. told y'all about Robert before that, that. guy. You mean, like, before you know, that, you know Robert Smith. They were like, who's that guy? Like, I, well, you, know, I, you remember I told you and Corey that was before that even happened. Man, so, I mean, Morehouse has, you know, we've had, like, everybody. I, like I told you, I graduated with Ennis Cosby. So, Cosby was at my, he was in the audience at my graduation. Wow, wow. And then, uh, you, you know, we've had Oprah. We've had um, uh, even uh, Obama came and did a speech at, at Morehouse. So, Morehouse is doing this darn thing. I think the guys that come out of Morehouse are doing extraordinary things. You know, some stuff that you just, you just, we're almost the best at almost everything in every field we're in, you know, whether we're lawyers, doctors, fashion business, stuff like that. So it's just, it's just nice to see a lot of young guys that are, you know, that are still exploring the world and trying to figure out new ways of, you know, making an impact and, uh, and the school's getting recognized. So I appreciate that. Wow. Um, so when it comes to the clothing, you, you one of the king guys for me, like that stay with it, stick with it. Um, I'm in the showroom today and I appreciate you for inviting us up again. And I just want to say, man, you know, I'm looking at the way the stores are, the way the market is, man. Just give me some ins and outs on just where you think, you know, things are for us now and where you think they're headed. What should store owners be trying to figure out? You know, me being a guy that have stores, you know, let me understand what is, what do you, from, from, from a, um, when I say rep position or from a, a distributor uh, 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 situation, what should I be doing to stay relevant? I think that, you know, you have to understand that these brands are not going to put the money forward to market their brand. So, you know, you, you just putting a sign up saying, oh, I got a cool, or I got a hustle, I got this, I got that, doesn't really have its weight like it used to, you know, because Sean John and Rockaware and these guys used to spend major budgets. So nowadays, what I've seen for successful um, stores is them branding themselves as the premier location to get mm. stuff. And they do a lot. There's a, you know, there's a couple guys that I um, try to get into, and primarily I like their stores because they do so much, um, you know, they do so much promotion for their store. It's great. And that's the only way you're going to really kind of get the attention. And just, you know, being able to get into this latest technology and, you know, having, like you said, a podcast, having, you know, um, everything set up, you know, all your Instagram, your snaps and everything. And then having a reason for people to come shop with you. You know, there's a guy out in uh, Arizona, um, guest list. You know, he does the whole custom shoes and whatnot, but he brings in a, a bunch of entertainers into his store constantly and is able to kind of create such a buzz that he just gets that natural traffic. I mean, you become a destination, so you just have to be that to know that you got to make your store a destination. And then no matter what you sell, technically you're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think uh, for a lot of the brands that I represent, part of the, part of the prerequisite is that you have to be a good designer. Like, it has to look good. If it doesn't design well, it's not going to translate well. So for a lot of stuff that I try to represent has to have something in my eye that says, hey, you know, these guys know what they're doing. So I work with a, an awesome team of designers. But so far as that's concerned, I mean, the money, street money is a little different now. You know, and the government money, you know, like, like it used to. So we're definitely going into new territory. And we're trying to figure out, we're all trying to figure out as reps, because if you're not making money, I'm not making money. And if I'm making money, the company's not making money. So everybody's kind of suffering together. But I think at the end of the day, it's, it's all about marketing. People have money. They just need to have, you know, their money's going in so many different ways because people are advertising for that same dollar. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you advertise for that dollar and you get your, and get your piece. And, and that's the, advantage, the, the advice I have for any retailer is to you 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 gotta you gotta market your store you gotta you know you gotta have good customer service you gotta give people a reason to shop with you spend bread with you and then uh, you'll have your loyal customers and then when you market enough you'll get the satellite customers that come in and you know some people who visit and things of that nature but then also having the best look and then making sure that the guy's walking out with a good look that's gonna you know that's gonna help your return on business man um I 
when I think about you, Magic, seeing you run around, you know, dealing with, you know, the clothes down there, that's how I see you, you know, and, and we're getting ready to go to Magic again. What do you think we can, uh, what, what do you think we're in, in store for? I mean, from what I understand, a lot of a lot of retailers will be there. Um, I know a lot of brands last time were there, so I, I don't foresee them not trying to show up and be, you know, bring their best presentation. I think a lot of buyers are trying to find out what the next trend is because there's always some new brand that is popping up somewhere, you know, with some type of hype. So there's definitely a handful of brands that are that are doing that. Um, so th those guys will definitely make some money. A lot of people who think they're going to be making money and then do the then do the proper the proper work, you know, good luck. But if you're out there putting in the work, you're out there marketing and making yourself relevant, you're gonna make a lot of money because people are definitely looking way, looking for ways to make money in 2023 for sure. Wow, um, you know, um, when I think about the show, like I say, I look at you, I look at Carl Kanai, I look at different people that was coming up, you know, different brands, different people just coming up saying, hey man, this is what we're doing this this time, man. And, you know, Mike Cherry, all the different people who trying to figure out ways to stay, you know, in the midst of things, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I want to tell y'all, thank you guys, you brothers that look like me that, I mean, even Ralph, just all of you guys that look like me that, motivated me to stay even focused and come into that show. But a lot of people say, well, it's for the money, for the, for the retail. It's not really. It's really for the culture. It's for our people to see that we got something going and, and we basically trying to lay out a blueprint for our youth, to be honest with For me, you know, when I do it, I do it for the people around me, not only just the youth, but a lot of people that look like us that don't really have a lot of businesses. You and I can attest to you go out to these markets. You're not going to a lot of black owned businesses like that. You, you go to a lot of department stores or you go, but there's only a few mom and pops that's really, you know, holding it down like that. You know what I mean? I, I can name them off my hand in Dallas or in Houston. And, um, you know, the one thing I do is just try to stay in that market just to say we got something. You know, that's just from my perspective. Well, I think that, too, is that you're exposing an audience to something that they probably would never see or understand that exists. You know, I mean, think about it. How many young people are growing up today that um, want to go into fashion, that think that that's even a lucrative business, not realizing that one of the richest men in the world right now owns Louis Vuitton. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like there are billionaires in the clothing business. So why aren't there more of us in this business, which is amazes me. You know, it's like, it's not really, because I promise you, if I ask anybody, if I tell somebody, it's like, well, what do you do for a living? That's how I sell rep for clothes. They look at me crazy, like, what is that? Like, what do you do? How do you make money? They think that I'm out in my trunk with it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're, they're not knowing that there's reps, like, just to let you know, like, in my business, there's people that I'm good with that are millionaires. I've been doing this for a long time. They make the right deal. They're millionaires in this That are business. reps. That are reps. I mean, I got a couple guys that are, that are friends of mine that I play hoop with and make a lot of money. It's a very lucrative business. And um, being a sales rep, you can make well over six figures, man. Wow. You can make seven figures doing this business. Easy. Wow. That's big. You get that's, the right line. It's real big. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, so if you're a high school or whatever, like being high school, I never knew this was a possibility. I never knew that. If somebody didn't introduce me to it, I would have never known that this is even something to make money with. You know, I got into sales revenue because some of the guys I got into were older, you know what I'm saying? But they were still able to make money because they're good businessmen, they got good relationships. And then it wasn't a matter of like, oh, you're like a 50 year old designer now, or you're like, you know what I'm saying? And like, oh, you're getting a little, you know, you're not mm -hmm. hip enough. It's like, mm -hmm. nah, you, you know how to make money. And so I, I've known guys that, you know, that repped up until they damn near 80 years old, man. Wow, that's big. Remember, remember Snoop, Snoop Dogg's line? Yes, yeah, yes. It, was a, it was a guy that repped him. And he, Pretty much, you know, this guy was almost the same age as my dad. So I figured this guy had to be been like 80, 70, 80 repping. Crazy. Wow, that's real crazy. You know. But what makes a brand um, stay the longevity like a Louis Vuitton? Because we've been in this business a long time where we see brands come, then it trickles and it goes. Mm -hmm. What makes Louis Vuitton so special? Because their designs are simple. Their quality, you have other brands out there who just have just as great quality as Louis Vuitton. What is it about Louis Vuitton that makes, and I'm just bringing them up because you mentioned Louis Vuitton. What makes them be that brand that's been around for such a long time and don't see like it's 
going anywhere at all. A lot of it has to do with the, the, the image that is sold. You know, when you think about like Ralph Lauren, I mean, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? You know, who, who does polo? Only mm-hmm. the elite, you know, it's just the polo in itself already says elite. But polo, I wouldn't even put polo because for me, when I first came here, polo was a thing where it was hot, then it went down, but then it came back up and it just had this roller coaster ride with polo. So it was like certain people would wear polo, then they weren't wearing it no more and there's other people would be wearing polo. And then now it's like polo came up with a different line within themselves because then you have like, what you call it, assassin polo, which, you know, this other, this another kind of polo is like an off-brand to polo that some chaps. people. No, it's not chaps. It's something, but you, you find it in Ross and all of those other mm. places, whatever. So some people can't afford polo polo by that. Mm-hmm. The horse is a little bit bigger. It's not the small horse and all of that. But to say that regular polo, I remember a lot of people weren't wearing that at one time. Mm-hmm. Then some people start wearing it. Mm-hmm. But Louis Vuitton, people never stopped wearing Louis Vuitton. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. What makes them who they are? Because even when you think about Louis Vuitton and Gucci, who do you think is higher up in status? Yeah, that's kind of like your Mercedes Benz and Rolls Royce kind of like, you know. Yeah, like to me, Louis Vuitton almost like a little bit up here. Gucci is like a little bit down here to me. Yeah, I think I think Louis has just been a little bit more exclusive. Um, what makes them be that brand? I think I think part of it has to be with I think they're a little bit more careful about how they you know promote the brand. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, these are these are fashion houses that you know have huge fashion shows all over the world. You know, and you know they're they come from you know that area where it's like high fashion is just in their blood. And then on top of that, the the price point, the the look and presentation says elite. A lot of times people want to be elite, whether you can afford it or not, whether you're somewhere downstairs and buying the, the the cheap version. The fact of the matter is that you want to you, you want your you want to at least feel like for you know that you have that elite feel to your life, and it looks good. I mean, but what I think good. Louis Vuitton is it is elite, but to me, for the elite elite people. It's not as elite, you know, right. because to me, it's it's expensive for us, but it's affordable where we can, you know, save up and go get it. But there are some brands out there that you, you can't even Louis? that you can't even pronounce uh-huh. that is higher up than uh-huh. the Louis that you can only find certain places and whatever mm-hmm. that that is what they le- I mean, there's no name tag nowhere that nobody knows what you're wearing, but people who know know. Yeah. what it is you yeah. know what i mean and yeah. it costs way more than louis that we don't know about because it's way out of our price range yeah or because the labels are not everywhere because the culture of african-american i'm going to say that because i've noticed that since i came here they like for people to know what they're wearing they want the labels they want the style so if i'm going to pay a lot of money for something you're going to definitely know what i'm wearing so i'm not going to wear something that you're not going to know what i'm wearing because i need you to know how much i'm spending like a Miri, Miri is a prime example. I, mean, I think right now their jeans are what, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars for a pair of jeans. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm hmm. Just and people are buying them all day, and I think the T-shirt itself is like five hundred, or just a simple one let one color a Miri. So that you know, I I just think that you know you gotta understand like, you know, money is attractive to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know, especially the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. So if you have the money, you want to use that to speak well of yourself Mm -hmm. you know and i think that you know a lot of it it's all about stun you you can't that this is what what fashion does it speaks for who you are as a person but for me personally as i got older i realized that just because you flash in money just because you flash in nice clothes cars that don't mean that you own any of that stuff that don't that means that could mean that you took every last penny that you had just to buy that that doesn't mean anything let me see your bank account that has millions of dollars in there then we can talk yeah, I mean, yeah. But sometimes you just gotta be confident with yourself. I mean, me personally, it's cheaper to to have a personality and confidence. That's true. You know, I mean, if you want to spend your last dime, because the thing is, you have to earn that money somehow. So mm-hmm. you, you're gonna be working for whoever that brand is for. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. if you if you want to go ahead and spend your money on a Louis a Louis purse, then you know, so, I mean, if it makes you happy, I'm good. You earned the money. Go ahead. You know, but 
I I'm just, not into all of that, so I, just, I don't. Really I just care think about that it. you know you should. Uh, if you have a personality, you'll save a lot of money. You don't mm-hmm. have to go out here, you know, drive all the fancy cars and you know live this life that you you know. Because the thing is, there's really rich people, and then there's that ghetto rich people that we think <laughs> that we doing something, you know. <laughs> yeah. So for us, you know, we got a stunt, but you know, you, you'd be surprised how the opposite sex reacts to money. I know, but go ahead. You know, I hear y'all talking, but I'm going to be real with you. If you do it at my age, you do it for yourself. You don't do it for impressing people. What I do, I do for me. I don't really care to entertain what everybody else think, everything, even up to buying clothes. Whatever I do, I do it from my heart. You got a Louis belt? Yeah, but that ain't nothing. It's from my heart. I don't care about what nobody <laughs> think when they see it. I'm not tripping on that. I'm fly. So it's always been about me. It's a little, it seems a little egotistic, maybe. You know what I'm saying? She see me when I jump in the mirror and blah, blah, blah. You know what's funny? You know, you know what's, what I'm saying? But it's for me, bro. You know what's funny? I bet you your audience don't, don't really know the real Elvis. Boss talk. You don't know, you don't know that the, the, the Elvis that went to magic with the whole white squad. You know, Boss talk. With the white tees, the tight fitted white tees. Boss talk. When he was flexing on everybody. When that was like, Unique Hustle back in the day. That was a different brand. Yeah, they don't know this. They, they see the frosty. They see the, you know, yeah, well, the grown-up, I mean, mature guy. That's the way you're supposed to do it. You got to evolve. I think that's what people miss out on. They they fear change a lot of times. I know certain people who won't wear, they won't, they won't take their hat off. Or because they scared, they insecure about how their head look. Millionaires, people who got millions, almost billions of dollars, won't take their hat off. You know, or or they on on podcasts and won't take certain, they won't do certain things because they don't want to look a certain way because they care about what people are gonna say. They gotta come from the heart, Kenyatta. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is, bro. You gotta be confident within yourself. You gotta know who God is in your life, and I think that's where you win. What you think? No, nah, you, you, you guys have been 100, man. <laughs> and, I, and I think that, like, if it's any example of, um, you know, a family and a couple doing the right thing, like, you guys have, you guys have grown and, and matured and, and done some amazing things. So I've, the thing is, I've seen y'all for, like, 10 years. That's a long time, bro, yeah. to see somebody. And I'm talking, like, we've partied. Talk, party, yeah, whatever, you know went what through saying? different situations business, together. Socked on the phone for like hours. Like hours. We would be like, all right, you get off first. No, you get off first. Having a good time. <laughs> what man. stands out to you the most about us? What stands out the most about y'all? Mm-hmm. The fact that you guys are a loving couple, man, to be honest with you. I mean, okay. it, it, and, it's, and it's like you guys are different. Like, I mean, I know you, I can tell that, like, when I look at you, I feel like your brain is going right up in there and plugging all into this brain and really trying to figure things out. Like, it's, it's weird because it kind of makes you feel like, all right, what is she thinking now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I just know, man, when we, when we come out and, you know, we get to sit with you um, in Los Angeles, California, and, you know, I get to hang out with my boy Kenyatta. You know, and just just kick it, man. You know, you did, it mean a lot to us, man. Yeah. We had an age now where... I had to take you out of crustaceans last time. Crustaceans yes, was the bomb, it. man. Oh it was my the God. bomb. Thank you so much. It was I the love- bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I don't know about nobody else, I but I loved it. it. I loved it. What the, did you love the most about the it? The Roman noodles. Not the Roman noodles. What was... <laughs> It's the garlic noodles, man. What do you feel? You know, yeah, it was garlic. Garlic noodles, noodles man. That's yeah, all. Yeah. That's what? all I loved. And, and the water was in a bottle. But you, but you, you don't, you don't, you, you, you need to fish, did you? No, you tried no. The sea bass? I had the crab. You had the sea bass. You taking us somewhere tonight, buddy? So I ain't even tripping. It's gonna yeah. be a real a burger or something. No, I'm not he doing wants all it that. hood. He wants well, burgers no, 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 and all to, that stuff. We're going to Harold and Bells, man. What is that? That's another. Uh, come That's on, man. Don't look, do me like this, bro. The style, man. They got you know he don't food. like them. He nah, don't like those. It, it's nah. not. It's not like that. But I'm saying you are gonna sit there and get fat, man. You are gonna get fat with me, bro. I don't That's, think y'all gonna make it out of the spot, bro. I think y'all gonna be literally sitting here like. I'm good. I'm good. So why do you think we need to be fattened up? I don't know. You know what? This, this guy was like, I mean, after all that money I spent for him to be complaining about some noodles, <laughs> I'm like, man, man come on. Thank bro. you so much, man. I, I really, I really appreciate it. I just, really, you could have took me anywhere. We could have ate outside standing up. No, I'm with you. Like I said, it don't matter. I said, you come to LA, you just got to see like some he of the He wants to give spots, you the experience. Man. I know. That's what she it told is. me that. I was like, man, he could take me anywhere. See, I, I don't love care. experience. I love the experience, okay? I'm like, you could take me over here to Fat Burgers. I'm good. I don't care. I, That's I really where don't. we're told 
totally opposite. But a lot of times he'll treat me to certain restaurants, certain for places, her. just for me. He don't really want to go, and he'll criticize it all. all day well, it seems like the the white so wait, wait, plate. Wait, wait, what restaurant is that? In, in it don't matter. Seems like the What's white the restaurant plate. Took me to last the time that white, steakhouse. White plate. Do you remember with it? the small small food on it, and you guys were like, "Oh my God, this is just scrumptious! I can't believe it, man. We made it. We're here." And I'm like, we could have went over there and got that thing where they, you know, when when you had a, the, the styrofoam where it's just, you know, you close it, click, click, you hit it, you can take it with you when you leave, go out in the front and eat. I just want to try it once. I'm a country If boy. I like it, I might go back. But if I don't like it, I don't go back. But I mean, when we in Dallas, experience. we go to different places. It's for the ambiance, bro. Thank you. I mean, to be honest with you, my favorite restaurant is Rufus. That's the one that's That's there. hard. That's hard. My, what I'm, you eat at Rufus, though? What you I'm a fat burger guy, man. I ain't tripping on no Rufus. That's just, I've never been there. Have we? Have you never been no. to Rufus? No, I you never I, been there. I think I have back in the day. Unless without me, but we never been. Yeah, there. yeah, I've probably been there. No, no, no. That, I, I, we grown, man. You, we may end up anywhere. You know, we at one point you got to realize we had five stores, and and we was we you know we were so spread thin at the time. You know, uh, a lot of times they run you down different avenues. How you doing different things? Have you going different places? To be honest with you, yeah, business Ru is crazy. Bro. Rufus is hands down one of my favorite restaurants, man. They they got this sick rib ribeye steak that's delicious. Um, a lot of people love Morton. Is it Morton? House? Morton's is Morton? good, but I'm telling you, like you're not gonna get a better ribeye than than at Rufus. And they got this like sweet potato casserole. They got. I mean, it's. Oh, um, there's a place that we went today. It was pretty good. Um, and yeah, I don't remember. I don't the name. remember the name of it. I don't remember the name of it, but it was really good. But this way, it was so good that um, you know how like when you go to certain restaurants, they give you bread for this to bring out bread or you know whatever. You know what they brought out for complimentary? Caviar. No. <laughs> How'd you like it? I loved it. He looked. At, first, that was let, raw me fish. let me Did tell you. Let me tell you. I gave it to him because I didn't want to tell him what it was at first. <laughs> Look at that face. The only way I knew that he would eat it is if I didn't tell him what it was. So I gave it to him. I said, taste this. I think it's butter or something. Just taste it. It's a different kind of butter. So he tasted it. He's like, oh. I was like, baby, that's caviar. I loved it. I loved it. I love the taste. It has this nice salty taste to it. Yeah. With crackers. It was so good. Raw fish. With crackers. It's fish eggs. It's fish eggs. Say, man, this is weird. <laughs> Raw fish. Stop playing. It's good. He won't even eat sushi. He do, he will not eat sushi at all. I'm not that guy. Give me a mm -hmm. piece of catfish and a light piece of light bread. Well man. done. Now, you said fat burger, huh? I do fat burger. We got someone on Crenshaw, man. We can take you out of Crenshaw and get you a fat he burger. He loves fat burger. I don't love fat burger. But, well, but, well, but you don't get the big king. The double king and all that, you just get your little regular, regular burger. burger. Just, I'm just kicking it. I'm a country boy. I'm real laid back. I don't do all that extra. Y'all can win. Y'all got the. Y'all got it. Go boom. I'm gonna be like, go get it. That's it. But country boys like hamburgers like that, bro. I thought y'all in more like red ribs and you know ribs. I eat that too. You okay. know, but we just ain't really just. You been to Phillips on Crenshaw yet? No. We, no. Yeah, we gotta go there. We don't go a lot of places, man. Hey. No, nah, that's a hood spot. It's on Crenshaw. I mean, you you drive down Crenshaw, you can't help but smell the the hickory <laughs> smoke. It's crazy. Like it's it's been there since I was a child. Right Do y'all have good barbecue here? Yeah, Phillips is Phillips is the one. I'm telling okay. you. Can y'all give me the address here? What's the address? How people can I come? They oh. already told you. No, go ahead. How about how about go to ahead. close it down? Go ahead. What's the? How can people get a hold to you when they? Or can people just pop up? They have to call you and make yeah. an appointment. They can't just pop up, can they? No, they can't just pop up. Right. Here. So I mean, I mean, we technically use a showroom for buyers, and then we have a couple, you know, customers that that they come through that we um, that we do business with. And then on last Friday of the month, they do have sample sales. So okay, it's a, a new store so, okay. in the area. Somebody want to try to get a get an account. What do they do? They can look us up on Vision Sales on IG. Okay. I got all my information on there. And so then they, what they do? They can Put get their in address in there. Yeah, get yeah. in contact with us. Mm -hmm. Send us an email, text messages. But tell us, tell us more about the sample sale because you said on the last um, Friday. Friday of the yeah. month. So all so the showrooms, all the showrooms in in the fashion district, mm -hmm. which is on Ninth in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So you have the Gary Building, which I'm in. Across the street is the Cooper Building. Then you have the New Mart, and then you have the California Mart. So for a lot of the women who shop, most of the showrooms are women driven. We're like they're very few. We're like. There's only but a handful of us that actually have men's clothes. men's clothing. So, so they know. can just come in here at that time, or exactly. do they have to make? They, they don't need in, no yeah. appointments or no nothing. No appointments. Just, come, just come in just last Friday of the month. And y'all um, samples are not two X, three X, and four X, unless it's just a plus line, plus size line. 
So your samples are mainly mediums? Largest. And lar okay, largest. Largest and 32s and 34s. Okay, just to let y'all mm -hmm. know, so y'all know <laughs> what to come shop for. Yeah. They lose weight. Check it, man. Hey, Our man. Gain. Our gain. Hey, man, listen, man. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk once again. Yes, My sir. guy, Kenyatta Sands, man, he always do it big. Uh, Y'all can always look him up on IG at Positive Wear. Yeah, Positive Wear Clothing, or you can look at uh, Vision Sales LA. Man, hey, man, it's been That's another great do. segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.